Welcome to the Top of the Morning Show. It's your girl, T.T. from the D. I want to thank you for tapping in this morning with us. You could have logged on to any other podcast. There are several other podcasts out there for you to listen to, but you chose to check out Top of the Morning Show with your girl, T.T. from the D, and I am super excited about that. I thank you for tapping in. May is Mental Health Month, amongst a lot of other things we celebrate and acknowledge and shine a spotlight on. This morning, we're going to talk about supporting a loved one experiencing depression. Mental illness and mental disorders are not taboo anymore. We're addressing what they would call, some would call, the elephant in the room. So we just wanted to shed some light. We're not going to hold you long. When a loved one is affected by depression, it can be difficult to understand or know how to help them. I've dealt with it. I'm dealing with it. And all we can do really is say pray and just meet them with grace and mercy, right? Because depression is an incredible complex and it could take you on a roller coaster of experiences. And there isn't one truth or a simple solution that will work for everybody. No two people are the same. No two people suffer the same. Yet there are some things that we can relate to. Some things that may mimic something that we're familiar with. Let's talk about the downward spiraling staircase of depression. You got your worsened mood, fewer activities, then depressive thinking. Now, gaining perspective on what your loved one is experiencing is very crucial. And it's part of the process. You know how they say you got to trust the process. You got to trust what you know is what you know. Visualization depression as a downward spiral in one way to simplify and understand clinical depression. One way to develop perspectives is by looking at depression as a steep downward spiraling staircase. And imagine ladies walking down a steep spiraling staircase in some hills some platforms wouldn't be easy so imagine sometimes people we know and love they are dealing with this yet they don't have on high hills or platforms this is their daily walk your loved one may be having difficulty finding that open door along with that staircase or may be able to find it easier to just run to it than run from it or walk from it But guess what? It can be turned around with support and guidance. It takes a village, right? The downward spiraling staircase may start with the person feeling worse than usual. And it can spark from physical or social, even psychological stresses. A worsened mood may lead them to taking part in fewer meaningful or enjoyable day-to-day activities. Like my mother, when I addressed situations with my mother... She loved the casino. Always was trying to get to the casino. I knew something was going on with our mother. When an open invitation, like, hey, might want to go to the casino? Oh, you know what? Maybe next time, not today. I'm looking like, what? Maybe she don't feel well. And it constantly became a, no, or why don't you go with your sister? Or I'll stay with the kids. And I'm like, well, no, no, it's about you, right? But they start to distance I knew something was happening. I knew, right? Because that was something she loved to do. Self-criticism and stress increased due to mounting responsibilities or missed opportunities. And then depressive thinking may encompass guilty thoughts, pessimism, putting themselves down, being irritated. You can kind of tell, right? And as the spiral develops, A complex dynamic emerges. That's when your loved one, your friend, they become increasingly stressed, right? And what they used to could deal with and cope with, they can't deal with or cope with, and it stresses them out completely. See, the response of the brain is slow, but we have to remind ourselves that we have to stop, pause, decompress, and catch our thoughts because we can definitely get stuck in a spiral for weeks, months, years some people even decades you ever met somebody or you know a relative or a friend, family friend and 
they just been mean or just just always gloomy and all your life you've known them excuse me <laughs> Thursday morning vibes they've just been this way been this way been this way and then you're looking like my god where's the silver lining when would this person find joy and peace and happiness and sunshine right let me tell you depression affects the motivated the innovative the encouraged the strong as well as the weak the unmotivated the disencouraged you understand and it can be very disheartening and stressful to watch your loved ones your friends go through it i know because you just want to hold them you want to help them you want to love them through it so all i can tell you is to really just pray 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 and do what you know your heart and your spirit allows you to do let's point out some symptoms of depression Depression symptoms can vary from person to person. Let's be clear. What may look like depression in me may not look like depression in you. But I think they mimic. Okay? Here are a few. Feeling of sadness, tearfulness, emptiness, or hopelessness. I remember feeling that before when I was battling depression. Angry outbursts, irritability, or frustration over the simplest thing. Loss of interest or pleasure in most or normal activities. It can include hobbies, traveling, sports, sex, cooking, cleaning. Okay. Insomnia or, or sleeping too much. Now you could not sleep and have problems sleeping or you could be sleeping too much. Okay. Tiredness. A lack of energy. So even so, just getting undressed, going to get in the shower, you could be like, oh, I don't feel like it. It's like, wow. Right? Changes in your appetite. Reduced appetites. Weight loss. Increased cravings for food. Weight gain. You might be a comfort eater. A comforter. You know, you like eat for comfort. So you gain that excessive weight. Okay? Anxiety. Agitation. Or restlessness. Slow thinking, speaking, or body movements. Trouble thinking, concentrating, making full decisions, and then remembering things. See, for many people that suffer from depression, the symptoms can be severe enough to cause a noticeable problem on a day-to-day basis, such as when you were working, you were at school, when you were home, social gathering functions, we see it. We recognize it. Now, it's very hard and difficult, I think, to see it within ourselves because it's us going through. So I think it's easier for us to grasp on and see it through others. We have to encourage treatment for those symptoms, though. Because the people who are dealing with depression, they don't recognize or acknowledge their symptoms. Right? And then they may even have difficulty asking for help or recognizing how to even get the treatment. But let me share this with you. Doing a little bit of research, here's how we can help. Talk to the person about what you've noticed and why you're concerned. I just did this with my mother yesterday. Explain that depression is a complex condition, not a personal flaw or weakness, and that they're the only one and they won't be the last one. Remind them that there are people who want to help them because they love them and they care for them. Now, suggest seeking help from a health care or a mental health profession. Some people are like, oh, no, I ain't going to. Okay, well, listen, don't watch your loved ones suffer because of your pride. Put your pride on the table. As a matter of fact, evict it. Consult with a primary care physician. Let them know what's going on. And you trust them with the information that you're giving them. Express your willingness to help them by setting their appointments, going with them if necessary and needed. Even if that includes family therapy, offer to help prepare a list of questions and things that they want to talk about. And then providing support, your support and understanding can kickstart the healing process. Now, encourage them to stick with the treatment though. Once they start to get treatment, encourage them to stick with it. 
Be willing to listen without judgment. And I know it's hard because we want to love them and we want to protect them and we want to guide them and we want to lead them. But you got to love them and meet them where they are. When your loved one wants to talk, listen carefully, intentionally, not listen to talk or listen to respond. Right. And I know it's hard, but sometimes we have to refrain from giving advice or opinions or passing judgment. We have to exercise and strengthen our listening skills a tad bit more when we're dealing with someone who's dealing with depression. And don't forget to give them positive reinforcement. Remind them that they are loved and appreciated and you notice that things is off and you want them to be back to their best possible self. And something I found to be helpful and I'm trying to work better on is make plans together. Ask your loved one to join you for dinner, breakfast, lunch, brunch, go to the nail shop, hair salon, barbershop, whatever that looks like. One of the things that brings my mother joy and it brings her a level of peace is when we go to get our feet done. It's a treat. She said, the next time I go, I'm going to get my nails done. But I don't want no fake nails. I want my nails done. So I told myself, I'm going to treat her to getting a manicure and her pedicure. I want to give her a whole day. I want to get her hair done, take her to get her nails and feet done, and then dinner. And maybe even top it off with let her stay at a nice hotel. Sounds good, doesn't it? Right? Now, for people that deal with, you know, depression, we must be aware of suicide risk. You're like, oh my God, what? Yes. People experiencing depression are at a higher increased risk of death from suicide. And that's sad to say, but it's statistically true. And if you believe a loved one illness is severe or life-threatening, please reach out to resources, someone. Call the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline just by dialing 988 from your smartphone to reach the Veteran Crisis Line. And use the same number, press 1. You even If you have to call 911, do so. Remember to take care of yourself too while you're going through the process. Because witnessing a loved one struggle with depression and knowing you can't fix it is very hard and very challenging. But please understand that emotions you experience such as frustration, helplessness, fear, guilt, anger, resentment are natural. Don't feel bad about it. It's a part of the process and you must trust it. But you got to report yourself to yourself by loving on yourself. Validate that your feelings are what they are. Don't water it down if it's not what it is. You know what it is. And you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, could I be dealing with depression? Perhaps. Perhaps. But I want to encourage you to love on yourself and love on those that you know are struggling. There's no sure way to prevent depression, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But some of these strategies may help you. Eat healthier. Eat lots of fruit and vegetables because it's good for the body, right? Exercise, whatever that looks like. Start out small. Work your way up. Get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Now, if you're already battling sleep depression insomnia, it's going to be tough. Take a warm bath. Drink some warm tea or some warm milk. Now, I'm going to tell you what I tell people. And I used to think it's like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. But I always tell people, if you can't go to sleep and you're like, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. You know what you could do? Read the Bible. And I used to think until I got checked in the spirit by a pastor listening to her show one morning, uh, one afternoon, writing out to do something. I used to think, oh, the word of God is good, but it makes you tired. No, the word of God is good, but it comforts you. So when you feel that, oh, I can go to sleep or I'm so relaxed, that's because God is comforting you through his word. Keep your thoughts balanced and positive. Take a vitamin D supplement because we lack vitamin D. A lot of us lack it. Take steps to control your stress levels because they can they can 
go from zero to 60 quickly. And reach out to other family and friends during your, your, your season of dealing with what you're dealing with, whether it's with yourself or with a loved one. Support, support, support. Support, support, support. And if you think you know that your loved one has severe depression, you may need a hospital stay. They may need a hospital stay, I should say. They may need to participate in an outpatient treatment program until their symptoms improve. And let me say this. If you know someone that's thinking about harming themselves, or if you are thinking about self-harm or suicide, please seek professional help immediately. I just saw a tragic story through social media yesterday about a young man, and I shared it on my page because the young man, his name was Isaiah. He was only 13. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what happened. You know how technology could be, but I was talking about the young man, 13-year-old named Isaiah, who was dealing with depression, and he was on suicide watch at a hospital. And allegedly, and I have to say allegedly because I don't have all the data. I, I've seen what's been circling around social media, but I really went in and went to his sister's page to hear the truth because this is her sibling. And she said that you clearly saw, which was so heartbreaking, you clearly saw the young man walking up the hall with a sheet, tying a knot in the sheet going to his room throwing the sheet over the door they're supposed to take rounds every 15 minutes they said they didn't go check on him until 15 minutes after that camera showed that young man draping that sheet over that door and that baby hung himself so when we say Mental illness is real. It is. It could be very detrimental on so many levels, in so many ways, for so many people. We mustn't take it lightly. We must address it, acknowledge it, because it's real. You can't act like it's not happening when it's happening. And I think that's part of the problem. A lot of times, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want people thinking nothing wrong with us. Or we don't want anybody thinking nothing's wrong with our loved one. So what's that saying? We fake it till we make it. But at what cost, y'all? At what cost? For that family, for that young man. And I reached out because they're trying to raise money. They didn't have life insurance for this baby. So... That's one less thing that they should be having to worry about. So, it's on my page. Do I know them personally? No. But in the spirit, they're my brothers and my sisters. They're family. That could have been any one of our brothers. That 13-year-old. That could have been any one of our children. It could have been any one of our nephews. Any one of our nieces. You understand? Could have been you. Could have been me. When we know better, we do better, right? That's what they say. That's what we hear. It's what we learn growing up. I tell my kids that. But do we? If you know that ain't your truth, don't speak it. You ain't got a lot to kick it, right? This episode is brought to you because this is a serious situation that we deal with on a daily basis with people, knowingly and unknowingly. We don't always know somebody's troubles. We don't always know somebody's battles. We don't always know what they're dealing with, what they don't want to deal with. So all I can say is love on yourself and love on others. Pray for our minds, our bodies, our spirits. There is definitely a spirit of suicide manifesting itself around and he was going to everybody's house that would let him in and we don't have to let him in 
bound him up, send him back to the pits of hell from where he comes from. Because it's definitely not sent from heaven. That's all I have for you this morning. I want you to have a wonderful Thursday. Whatever you do, wherever you go, be safe. Don't be out here speeding like these knuckleheads. Some of these folks, I'm like you racing and you rushing to hurry up and wait. For what? Or worse, you're rushing and you're ending up killing yourselves or others. Take your time in life. Don't be in a hurry to go nowhere. Enjoy every moment you get because tomorrow's not promised. I'll see you soon.